Okay, everybody. Let me turn my ringer off. How are you guys doing? Sorry, I am late. I was um, looking for my template. I was looking for the template I wanted to do today because we're doing journals and I also wanted to do this template. I could not find it. <clears throat> and I've also come to the realization that I have well over 100 rhinestone templates, like cut out already. Because I was crazy trying to find that template. That was crazy. I have well over like 100 templates and I definitely need to organize them better. Okay, so. But hey, everybody. I'm Angel B. Welcome to <laughs> Angel B Designs. Um, I'm going to start off by saying that this is a live. So what does that mean? That means that it's going to be a live tutorial. Um, it's going to be interactive. I'm going to be answering questions in real time. Um, I might have a story or two to tell you. I always have some kind of story time. Um, but this live may very well be two hours if not longer. So if you're looking for a tutorial that is more condensed, I have a YouTube channel that has over 400 videos of content that's somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes, um, if you would like to check that out. But for this particular video, if you are watching the replay, this is a live, okay? I'm going to start off by saying hello to everybody. Um, we do have a lot to do today. I decided I felt like doing a lot. I feel better. I know last week I did not feel well that I did not feel that well. Um, but I am definitely feeling a lot, a lot better. So, um, I want to show you guys how to design some journals in Canva and then we're going to make one and put it together. And then I also have a bling template that I want to do because today is April 1st, which is the start of Autism Awareness Month. Um, and for those that don't know, my five-year-old Levi is autistic. Um, so to kick off Autism Awareness Month, I want to do a template. Now, I'm, I'm not cutting it out because I have already cut it out. I have already cut it out. This is one that I made. Um, I made, I don't even remember exactly when I made it, but it was a little while ago. So it's going to be, um, and it's a bundle package. So this is the outline. This is the inside. It just says peace, love, and kindness. And then over here is the puzzle pieces that are in different colors. Um, they're in the shape of a heart which is the same template that's on my shirt. So this is the bundle. You're, you're going to get the SVG file and you're going to get the rhinestone in the same bundle. Um, and then this is, I did do this on a live some months ago with you guys, but the outline is white glitter. This inside is twinkle silver glitter, I think what it's called. And then these are the um, puff colors, red, navy blue, green, and yellow. And then I did the heart and puff. Sorry if you can hear the, uh, uh, I think it's a fire truck. I don't know. My office is right by a um, fire station. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say hello to you guys. And then I'm probably going to brush in the rhinestone template first. And then we'll go into Canva and we'll design our journal and do the journal. Okay. So, hello, Sandra. How are you? Or Sandra. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Martha. You guys, let me know what you guys are working on tonight or if you're working on anything. Um, how is everybody's Easter? Um, let me know how your Easter went. Hey, Leslie. How are you? Hey, Shay Shay and Dee Dee and Myrna. Hey, Marilyn. How are you? Hey, Jacqueline. 
And Precious, how are you? Hey, Robin and Jasmine. Hey, Marta. I'm scrolling kind of quickly. Hey, Gwendolyn, how are you? And Mylene and Deanna. Hello, this is time seven. It's seven. I go live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey, Deanna, um, Deanna, Robin Lynn, Miss Nini Designs. Hey, Gail. Hey, Small Fry. Hey, um, I already said Gail. Hey, Paulette. Hey, Kawanda, how are you? Little Stitch LLC. You guys, I gotta do, I gotta get some giveaway stuff. Maybe I'll give away the journal I make today. Hey, Lucille, to be young, gifted, and black, how are you? Crafting is my business, how are you? Hey, Eve. Hey, Edna. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Sandra. Okay, I think I'm at the bottom now. Okay. Hey, Kelly. Um, hey, Marta. Um, so I've been to Chicago a bunch of times, um, but this last week, um, so what she's talking about is I took my kids, they were on spring break last week. Um, mm -hmm. So I took my kids uh, to Chicago. I'm probably about a four hour drive. I live in Detroit. Well, right on the border of Detroit. Um, so it's about a four hour drive. So we packed up the kids and we went to Chicago and we did a bunch of stuff. We did the ice cream museum. We did the um, slime museum. I have to sneeze. And then we also did the sky deck and the kids absolutely loved it. I swear it's like every time I come on live, I have to sneeze every time. Um, oh, at you. Okay. <laughs> oh, I just returned home from Detroit. All right. I'm going to, so like I said, we're going to brush in the template first and then we'll go ahead and go into Canva. So let me add in my iPad. All right, let me know if you guys can hear me. You should be able to. Okay, so I think this is going to go on black. Yeah, I think I'm going to put this on black. So I'm going to do the outline. Let's see. What do I want to do the outline? I think I'm going to do the outline in Labrador. Always Labrador. Uh, always Labrador. Um, and then... I'm thinking... I need to order... Oh my God, did y'all see that? I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm gonna do neon. I need to order some neon. More neons, cause I'm about to be out. So we need neon. Uh, I do have a big yellow. Let's 
Uh, we need blue, yellow, we need green. Actually, I think I'm going to use up this green right here. Green and red. So, I got the neon red AB. You know what? I want a candy apple. I'll probably do candy apple. What do you guys think? So, for the, for the heart, for the heart, I don't know if y'all can see me. So, for the heart here, on the on the rhinestone template, I'm pulling the colors, and I'm doing all neon. Y'all, can y'all hear me? Hopefully, y'all can hear me. Um, so I'm doing neon yellow, neon green, neon blue, and then for the red, I don't have regular neon red. I have neon red A B or candy apple. Which one? Which one do y'all think I should do? for the red. And then the outline is going to be Labrador. I got to order some uh, neons. And then for this, I think I'm going to do Hyacinth AB for the inside. But which red should I use? The neon red AB or the candy apple? I gotta get my scooper. I'm seeing candy apple. How was everyone's Easter? Um, this template is linked in my description box. You get it's a bundle, so you'll get the rhinestone template um, and the SVG template as well. What's the name of the stand you have your laptop on? Um, I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but I did get it off of Amazon. I just kind of, I think I typed in um, laptop portable desk or something like that. I'll see if I can find it before we get off. Hey everybody popping in. How are you guys? Don't forget to hit the like button on your way in. How was everybody's weekend? I had a story time. I'm gonna, I need to start writing down notes before I go live because I'll be forgetting what I was going to tell y'all. I had a story time to tell you guys. 
but now I don't remember. So I have like really been stalking um, people on Instagram that do um, embroidery because I've, I've really been thinking about it. And like creating Pinterest boards of like all the stuff that I would want to do. Is today the longest birthday? A child, I, honestly, she say every day is her birthday, so I'm not sure. I am actually not sure when Delanda's birthday is, to be perfectly honest. Let her tell it her birthday is every day. I still kind of have like a um a lingering cold a little bit like before it was like the full on flu, okay? I had full on absolute flu symptoms. Whereas now I just kind of feel like I have a cold. Does anybody know when Delanda's real birthday is? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Patrice knows because I know she went to her, her birthday party. But yeah, I don't, I don't know when her actual birthday is. According to her, her birthday was last week. So I don't know her birthday today. You know, my thing is like stuck. This mat is low key kind of stuck to my table because when I was doing, I don't know if you guys saw that video I did where um, it was the all over sublimation and I used that, um, it was the Elmer's spray glue. I kind of got it all over this table and then I prematurely put my mat back on the table and it's kind of been stuck to it ever since. Hey, everybody popping in. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just brushing in a, um, a template that I made sometime last year. I don't remember exactly when I made it, but um, today is the first day of Autism Awareness Month. And my five-year-old is autistic. So, to kick off the month, I decided I wanted to make this template, this shirt. So, that was one story time I was going to tell you guys. So, the, um, in honor of autism, 
awareness. I kind of wanted to just tell my story a little bit with my son, my five-year-old, because the whole situation with Levi and us getting him tested and um, all these things, it wasn't like... So with Levi, it wasn't like a clear indication that he was autistic. Um, it was more so like, so Levi was on the pacifier. He was very, very attached to his pacifier. Um, and Levi didn't talk. And um, I thought it was because he was very, very attached to his pacifier. So even, you know, his daycare told me that, you know, you have to get him off the pacifier. It's hindering his communication skills. Um, he doesn't want to use his words, you know, things like that. <clears throat> so, you know, for the longest, I just thought that Levi didn't talk because of the pacifier and once we got him off of his pacifier he would start talking um well that wasn't necessarily the case and after we took the pacifier so this was probably around two two years old um was when we started right after his second birthday we started the process of getting him off of the pacifier. Um, the problem was that he still would not talk. And then he started to, once I started to notice that something was possibly, you know, wrong, um, he was about two and a half, almost three. And his tantrums started to get um, like self-destructive. So he would do things like, um, hit his head on the ground. If he was upset, he would fall out and kind of smash his head, his, his head on the ground, or he would, um, smack himself, uh, things like that. And that was kind of when I started to notice that it was more than just a pacifier. Um, but the thing with autism is that they don't want to give you an official diagnosis or even test for it until they're at least three years old. Because I guess it's hard to tell what is an autistic behavior versus what is toddler behavior so they didn't even want to test him at all um i was low-key kind of like in denial for like the first year so i would say around the time he turned maybe three <clears throat> was when i started to notice but um he didn't get tested until he was about to be four. So he turned four in November and we got him tested. Well, he didn't get tested, but he got an IEP from the public school system um, in October, right before his first, his fourth birthday. And then the following February, which was last year, February, was when we got the official diagnosis. So he was four at the time. But I say all that to say, um, because a lot of people, you know, ask me what were the signs, what were, um, like, what was going on that made me think that he may be autistic, you know, things like that. And for every kid, you know, it looks different. Autism is one of those things where it can look different in every kid. 
Um, Levi does make eye contact. There's, you know, a lot of babies that, or children that don't. Um, there, it's just, there's different levels to it. So I say all this to say, if you have a feeling that something might not be right, that's all that, that that's all that you need. If you just have a feeling something is not right, you know, as, as that child's parent, that's a justified feeling. And, you know, don't ignore it. Because at the end of the day, it only hurts the child when you try to ignore it or when you try to talk yourself out of getting the test done. That doesn't do anybody any good. And autism isn't the end of the world. It's not, it's not a, I don't know. I guess it, you know, we, I just want to normalize it. I want to normalize the conversation because I know it's like a stigma in a lot of households, okay? In a lot of households. So if you catch my drift. And I just want it to be normalized. I just want the conversation to be normalized. It doesn't mean... You're a bad parent or you did anything wrong or it doesn't mean any of those things. But signs look different in every child. I'm going through that comments seeing if I missed any questions. Hey Patrice Boo, how are you? This template I can tell this this I'm probably gonna remake this one with the with the new flock because This one is sticky. So I can tell I made this with that. Uh, sticky flock. This Hyacinth AB is so pretty. And it's so pretty on black. I'm putting it on a black shirt. Yep. B play C that's correct. If as the parent, if you if you just feel like something isn't right, it's better to be safe than sorry. Because like I said, it the symptoms the symptoms are different for every child. Levi's high functioning, but there are other kids who are even considered to be more high functioning than him. So their symptoms may not be even as bad as his were, but they would still be considered to be on the spectrum. So you just, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. If you feel like something isn't right, or maybe it's just even a little bit off, you know, talk to your pediatrician. I know my pediatrician didn't want to do the diagnosis. Typically they refer you to a specialist for it, which is fine. 
but you know, just bring it up. Levi was nonverbal and was not potty trained at all. Um, and he is speaking in full sentences now. And it has been potty trained for, I mean, 100% potty trained for about eight months now. I mean, he was, he, he potty trained pretty quickly after he started ABA. The talking, um, the talking has been taking the longest, but I mean, like the other day, yesterday, he, me and my husband, we were in the kitchen and we were talking, <coughs> I was cooking and we were just kind of talking or whatever. And Levi comes running into the kitchen and he's crying and, you know, we're like, what's wrong, Levi, what's wrong? And he's like, my Optimus Prime, I can't get it. I can't reach it. So my husband was like, well, where is it? He said, it's under the bed. And that was the first time that he had ever said a direction, like correctly, like used the, um, the word under correctly. So he, um, he's been learning in ABA things like on top of, underneath, over there, over here, you know, those kinds of words. And when he first started to learn them, he would say like, if he was trying to say the cup is on top of the table, he would say the cup is underneath on top of the table over there. He would, he would try to use all of the words in the same sentence. So it was like he was, you could tell it was clicking. He was trying to use it, but he didn't know which one to use. So he would say all of them. He would say the cup is underneath on top of the table over there is how he would say that whole sentence. But then yesterday he said, it's under the bed. And he just said under and nothing else, and the Optimus Prime was in fact under the bed. So he used the correct one. And that was the first time he did it. And we both were like, oh my goodness, good job. You know, giving them high fives and stuff. But. It's a process. For sure. This one's so pretty too. Oh, I don't know. I'm not really putting the uh, colors on the puzzle, the actual puzzle pieces, in any particular order. <sighs> Alrighty. Let's pick this up. Yep, this is neon yellow. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's definitely always surprising us. Oh my gosh. Now why would it do that? When getting ton of them moves. All right, I'm gonna do blue. Y'all yeah, need to order. I probably done said that about three times. I need to order some more neons. So we're going to go into Canva Pro today and work on the journals. Um, do you guys use Canva Pro a lot? Or what do you guys use to design? Or do you just um, buy templates? What is your secret to picking up the rhinestones without them moving? What do you mean? Like with the KTM tape? Um, so what I do is I go in a U shape like this, U taco shape, and then I go middle out is how I lay it. And you have to do it quickly. Um, I try not to let the, uh, the tape stick to my fingers when I'm putting it down because sometimes that messes it up too. Like if you let, when you're going to put the edges down, if you let the tape kind of stick to your fingers for a second. Um, that makes them move. But it's really just practice and confidence, honestly, is the top two things I would say you need to get the KTMS part down. You have to be confident when you're dropping it. Oh my goodness. I didn't say oh my goodness about five times. Let me hurry up with these stones because they keep trying to go everywhere. Is there anybody in the chat that's been watching me since April or May or June of 2020? There was a lady that came up to me in Michael's. Do y'all hear that? That's so ratchet. They uh they on telegraph right to me. It's starting to warm up where I'm at. I'm in um Detroit and you know temperature's starting to go up a little bit. And around here, when that happens, people start to get just a little bit ignorant.
just a little bit ignorant. And they are on the street on the corner of racing. Like people, I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Street racing. Yeah, if you if you this piece is too big. If you don't let your fingers stick to the tape, it tends to uh, drop down easier, I've noticed. I don't know, so I kind of have a little secret. My, I have acrylic nails. I wear, you know, acrylic nails. So I let the tape kind of hang on like the tip of my nail right here instead of actually touching my finger. So technically my tape kind of just touch touches the edge of my nail and it doesn't really stick to it. So if you don't wear nails, I would say, I'm not sure what to tell you, <laughs> but that's kind of like how I get the tape to not stick to my finger. This one don't have any gray on it. That's weird. So look, every now and then, I don't know if you guys can see it right here. Do you guys see that uh, rhinestone? How there's no adhesive on the back of it. Every now and then you'll get like one stone here and there that uh, doesn't have any adhesive on it. It's just, hopefully you guys can see it right here. So all you can see the adhesive on all the other stones and then that one's just clear. You can just take that off because it's, it's not going to stick to the shirt. And then replace it with another one. And now they all match up. No, I haven't made the journal yet. I'm gonna brush in this last color and then I'm gonna we're gonna do the journal. I don't even have my heat press on, so I'm just gonna brush this, get it out of the way. I'll turn my heat press on, and then while we're waiting for that to warm up, we will do the journal. Okay. Thank you. 
Aber all right, there's the last piece there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my heat press and then um, while we're waiting for this to heat up, we'll go ahead on over to uh, Canva. Can you guys hear me? There's a small echo. But I think it's coming from my um, my iPad. Okay. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, guys. Did you purchase the large container? Um. So the these containers come from the baby's booty. Um. See, it's branded with her name on it and her logo. Um. But the containers, when you purchase rhinestones from Eve, um, at the baby's booty, she gives you the containers. Um this is how they're sent to you inside of the containers okay so let's get on over to we've already been on here for about an hour nope 45 minutes okay let's get on over to Canva <clears throat> okay so this is Canva Pro. Um, I'm actually not sure how much Canva Pro is these days anymore. <laughs> I kind of just pay for the yearly. Um, so what that means is I pay one price and that covers the whole year. Um, but this is Canva Pro. This is what I'm going to design in. So this is the one that I did earlier for Instagram. Um, I haven't put it together yet, so we can put that one together together as well as the one that I'm going to print off. Um, sorry if that's loud, y'all. I swear, it seems like every time I go live, they want to start cutting up outside. But um, yeah, so I got this image here from Etsy. The other image I'm going to use, I also got from Etsy. Um, so I'm just going to go to the home page. So this would be like if you just logged into Canva and you uh, need to basically get started from scratch. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to go up here to create a design and then you're going to go down to custom size. Now this is going to automatically go to pixels and you can just click the down arrow and switch it to inches. And we're going to do eight and a half by 11, which is going to be the size of our journal. And then you're going to click select a new design. Okay, so this is the blank canvas. It's just going to come on white. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to uploads because I do already have my image uploaded here from um, Canva, which just says in April we wear blue, which is for autism awareness. Um, what I'm going to do is just kind of, I'm going to center this, but I am going to add somewhat of a background as well, but you'll see that in just one second. So I, I do need to pick a background color. You can leave it white if you want to. All of this is personal preference. I'm just going to design it with you guys here just so you can kind of see how I do it. Um, so under here, if you go to the, the color swatch up here at the top, um, typically with Canva Pro, they're going to show you the photo colors. So these are all the colors that are within this image. Well, not all of them, but some of the colors that are within this image. So if you wanted to pick a color that was within the image to be your background, you can. Okay. I'm going to go with this light blue, but I'm going to change it just a little bit. And to do that, you would go up here to the plus sign on this kind of rainbow swatch. And this is to add a new color. So if you have like a hex code 
you could type it in here or a color code. You could type it in here. You can use the eyedropper tool <coughs> and you can select a color that way. Um, or let me see, we go back to the light blue. What I like to do is I'll typically <coughs> pick a color from the photo colors and then just kind of play with the color up here a little bit so that it's not exactly like one of the colors that's in the image. I just want it to be similar so that we can kind of play off of it. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so I like that color blue there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of edit the photo, add a little bit of a backdrop um, so that we can kind of make the image pop a little bit, okay? Because right now it just kind of looks like an image sitting on top of a blue background. Um, so if you select the actual image, uh-oh, if you select the actual image and then go to edit photo, and then go down here to FX effects, we're gonna go to shadows, and then you can do an outline or um, a drop, which is like a drop shadow, or a glow. <coughs> I'm gonna kind of play with the outline here. So you could make the outline kind of look like this, similar to a drop shadow. If you blur it out, it kind of looks like a drop shadow. If you don't blur it out and just kind of this is without it, and then this would be like if you added it. It just kind of outlines the image so you can see it more, but then you can also change the color so it might look a little bit better in like a different color. But you can definitely play around with that. This dark blue kind of looks nice too, the dark blue outline. But I'm going to go with a drop shadow. And I think I'm going to go with a white drop shadow. Or maybe I'm going to do glow. But this is how you just kind of play around with it. Play around with the intent. You can make it more intense, less intense. Just kind of play around with it to get it how you like. I actually think black looks better. Okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to, on the image, bring in the sides so that we can lessen some of that dead space there. And then I'm going to extend it out. Now, keep in mind, when you're designing this, keep in mind that your holes are going to be punched on this side of the paper. So if it seems like my image is a little bit off to the right more so than it is centered, it's because I'm accounting for the fact that I'm going to be punching holes on the side of this, which is where, you know, the ring is going to go for the, um, the coil. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go up to elements. Now, the cool thing about Canva is that you can type in like a keyword. So for example, if I type in autism background it's going to give me everything that they have in the graphics that you could probably use as a background okay now keep in mind you got to be creative so if you see something like this you're like well i can't use that as a background so let's say something like this I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to show you as an example. What 
what you could do is put it on your board, your canvas board, position it to the back, and then you can play with the transparency to make it lower. So if you wanted to do something where it's like multiple, like this, just keep in mind, like, you know, you got to be creative. So you can create a background with it if you wanted to. Um, what I'm going to use is Um, I like, I like these little stars here. So what I'm going to do is make them bigger. We're going to position these to the back and then I'm going to duplicate it and just kind of place them on top of each other, but in the background. And you can play with these however you want. Be creative, move things around. Also something that you can do is you can um, for some of these, not all of them. And this is a Canva Pro feature. But in some of these, for the for instance, the one that I use here, you can change the colors. So in some of these puzzle pieces, the color is green. However, up here, they don't have any green. So we do have a lot of blue going on. We have blue in the background. We have blue inside the image, but there's no green. So what I want to do is this blue piece here, I kind of want to turn it green. So what I'm going to do is get the eyedropper tool and we're going to go into the actual photo and we're going to get the color green that is in the photo so that we kind of stay within those colors. And then I'm just going to add in a little bit of green. So for this one, I'm going to add green where the red is. And we're going to turn that one green and just throw in a little bit of green in there too. Okay, and I think I want to turn this red one um, dark blue. Now my laptop is about to die. Let me go grab my charger. I will be right back. Does anybody have any questions? I'm about to go through my chat here. I know I haven't been looking at it. <coughs> um, style with Arnessa. I used to use Photoshop. I don't anymore. I don't actually have the um the I think it's like a membership or the software. I don't have it anymore. So I just use Canva. Okay, so Canva Pro is $14.99. 
All right. I'm going to play with this drop shadow again just to see if I can maybe darken it up just a little bit. Or I might leave it white. What do you guys think? I kind of like this yellow a little bit. Hey, everybody popping in. How are you guys doing? Okay, so I actually think I like this yellow. I'm going to stick with the yellow, but I'm going to adjust some of the yellow on the outside just to kind of offset it a little bit. I don't want purple. Okay. All right. I'm not, if, if I keep playing with that, I will literally be here all night. I have to just say it's fine. I'm a perfectionist and I will literally just keep messing with it and keep messing with it. So I'm going to leave it like this. Um, I like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download it. I'm going to go up to share and then we're going to go to download. And I'm going to take this sizing here, which is the pixels. And I'm going to drag it all the way up. This is going to give me, it's going to, it may take a little bit longer to download or it may come into Silhouette Studio on the bigger side, but it is going to give me the highest resolution um, as well. So I'm going to click download and I am going to be printing from Silhouette Studio. Okay, so I'm going to put this on my dashboard. And then we're going to go into Silhouette Studio. And then this was the image that I had already printed out earlier today. So I'm just going to delete that. And then we're going to go to File, Merge, and bring in our file here. Okay, so here's the file here. Now we are going to be making this eight and a half by 11. So I'm just gonna type in up in the width eight and a half. And then it should be the correct size to print. It looks like it is. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'll show you guys my, um, I'm printing from my Epson 7710 which is regular inkjet. Okay, so I'm going to show you my settings. Now for this printer specifically, I do not have the drivers installed for my Epson 7710. Even though it is regular inkjet, I could have installed the drivers, but I've never had any printing issues when it comes to this printer without the drivers. So I just never installed them. 
So I do have my Epson Workforce 7710 selected. We're going to go over to Preferences. Uh, I think my printer is off. I have to go turn it on. And then we're going to go to Paper Quality. I have super basic settings here. So 8.5 by 11. Print quality is 600 by 600. Borderless printing is on. Output quality is high. That's it. And again, that's without the drivers being installed. Okay. Um, I think my printer is turned off. So I need to go turn it on really quickly. I'm going to stop share and go turn on my printer. Okay. So I actually forgot. I know it's kind of dark over here. That something is going on with like, I don't know if it's my internet or what. But it's like none of my devices will stay like connected through uh, the Wi-Fi. Okay, so now it says the printer is ready. It was on. It just wasn't plugged in through USB because, yeah, I don't know why my none of my devices are connecting to my laptop through my Wi-Fi. So, you guys, I'm just using um, cardstock here. Hopefully, you guys can see super thick cardstock. I think it's like, what, 180, something like that. Let me uh, add in my other camera so you guys can see, actually. Okay. And then... Y'all, I never know how to... Okay. You go back to Silhouette Studio and then I'm going to print. And then this is the other one that I did. I have to show you when the light, I'm by the my ring light. But this is the first one that I printed. I'm not sure why it's not printing. But I know you guys can't really see it because it's kind of dark. But this is regular inkjet ink. Like, look how vibrant that is. I have to take this apart because I didn't like how thin it was. 
but this is regular inkjet. This printer, I've had it for four years now. Why is that not printing? Y'all, yeah, of course, the printer want to act crazy when I'm on live. When I was just printing from it earlier. Let's try this again. Oh my goodness, my printer don't want to print now. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my printer. So I may have to um, just take apart the other one that I said I was, um, I needed to take apart anyway. That's for whatever reason. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to reboot it or something because Turn it back on. But hey, everybody watching.
Okay, and then I'm going to turn it back on. It's so dark over here. This is why I never have my computer over here unless I have my ring light because it's so dark over here. All right, let's try this again. Having a night, Sharon. Has anybody ever used um, the cinch before? No, it is not wanting to print. This is crazy. Okay, it's telling me to remove it and then add it back. I'll try that. And then if not, I'll just go ahead and take the other one apart. <clears throat> Been in the box since Christmas. Okay, let's do... Okay. So I got my cinch back in 2020. And I have had the same one since then. Which is why. So the one that I linked in my description box is like a pink and white. I think they have like pink and white or all white. And, um, those are the new colors. The one that I have, the gray with the blue, I haven't seen that one in a while. I haven't, can't get the binding right. I always mess up. How do you mess up the binding? Alrighty, let's see if it wants to work. 
that's literally how it goes. I was using this printer just fine earlier, and then I get on live, and boom, it don't want to work. I select that one. I do know I have to replace my magenta, but it that shouldn't be the issue. Yeah, these Epsons are um, definitely fussy, but I think I got it. Okay. Seems like it's going to print now. But this, let me show you how thick this paper is. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is very, very thick cardstock, which is what I'm using um, for the cover. Now, the reason why I like to go cardstock instead of, I mean, you can go copy paper if you want to. It just depends on, you know, your preference. I prefer for my um, cover, my front cover and my back cover to be on the thicker side. So that's why I go with the thick cardstock. And then we're also going to laminate it. Um, Oh, that looks so good. That looks so good. Um, but we're also going to laminate it um, as well. So it's going to be a nice, thick front and back cover. But this is the cover. Look at those colors. Let me remove this. But this is the cover. I mean, this is regular inkjet ink, you guys. Like the 252 ink that comes with this printer. That's what this is. Not Ecos. I mean, I haven't done nothing to this printer. And I think that's why it's lasted so long. Is because I'm using it the way that it was intended. This is just regular inkjet. The 252 ink cartridge that goes in here is what's in here. I don't have any other ink or anything. But... Look how good those colors look. And I don't even have the ring light on it yet. Um, so this is the front cover. I have to print another one for the um, the back cover. Now, with this paper, though, and this printer, because it's so fussy, I literally can only put one piece of paper in here at a time because it'll jam. That's the only thing I don't like. And then the fact that, you know, I have to pull this out manually I don't like that either but um outside of that until this printer dies I'm not getting another inkjet printer I want to keep rocking with this one until it dies on me so I'm going to print another one exactly like that for the back cover Um, I did unplug my printer to move it over here because it was over there. Um, maybe that's what the issue is. Um, I got this car stock from Michaels. No, the cinch doesn't take the um, coils apart. No, it doesn't take the coils apart.
All right, and then here is the other one. And because this is inkjet, I mean, you don't, it's not so, oh my gosh, that looks so good. <laughs> if there's one thing about me, y'all, I love colors. When they pop like this, I love colors. All right, let's move over here because we have to laminate them. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, this is also this scotch laminator. This is the original laminator that I bought in 2020. I have not had to buy another one. Um, I think it's a different color now as well. I think it's blue and white, maybe. Mine is green and white. Let me bring my um, ring light over here because it's dark and I don't like that. there that looks better with some light um but this is the original one that i bought they have them in um i think office depot if you still have any by you i do have one link this exact one except it's blue and white now mine is green and white um but we're going to be using the thermal pouches which is the eight and a half by 11 um and we're just going to laminate these basically this is how it comes. You open up the laminator or the laminating pouch there. It is kind of cinched at the bottom. And then you put your paper inside the pouch. You do kind of want to push it all the way down and make sure it's nice and straight so that's how it looks when you put it inside the laminating pouch and then for this laminator that i have um there's a setting for three milliliters or five milliliters i click the five because this is the setting in which you have to you have to pick the thickness of the material that you are laminating so because we're using cardstock and it's on the thicker side um, I picked the three milliliter, I'm sorry, the five milliliter so that when I go to put it in here, it doesn't jam. Okay. If you use regular copy paper, you could pick the three milliliter one, but because I'm using the thick card stock, we're going to go with the five. When this, the word ready right here turns green, it's going to turn green. And that will let me know that we can go ahead and put it through. So it's still warming up. Essentially what a laminator does is this is hot. Um, you put this through the heat while it's going through the laminator closes these edges and really seals them off. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I am going to trim the edges. I know there's like some controversy around whether you're supposed to trim it when you laminate it. But what I do is I do trim the edges um, just to kind of, because you see how thick it is, the space between the top and the paper. I just kind of trim it a little bit around the sides and the top. And then once I'm done trimming them, I put it through the laminator again to seal off those edges. If you don't, what I when I was doing these back in 2020, um, I didn't know to run it through the laminator the second time. And what I would have is... The paper, the paper would come apart like that. So to avoid it coming apart, if you're going to trim it, just run it through the laminator the second time. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm just waiting for this to get all the way warmed up. It doesn't say it's ready yet. The laminating pouch is five milliliters. What weight is your cardstock? I want to say it's 180. Um, I believe it's 180, but I will double check for sure. And I will link the, uh, the paper down below um, after this video. Oops. I'll link the paper 
in my description box um, after the live. But I believe it's 180 and I got it from um, Michaels. The laminating pouches are linked in the description box as well. Um, they're the five milliliter. Um, I, I did see somebody ask, I said, can you make different sizes? I can do smaller sizes um, just because my laminating machine is only eight and a half by 11. I mean, I guess I could like use a heat press. It, so I have some laminating um, rolls and I mean, I guess you could use that if you wanted to go bigger. It would just be a lot more steps involved if you were going to go bigger. Um, it would just be harder. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but the word ready just lit up in green, which lets me know it is ready to go ahead um, and be used. So with this, you just got to kind of line it up. And when it, it's lined up and it catches, it'll just start to slowly go through. There we go. So the when, when you get the bottom part to catch, the laminator will just do the rest of it. You just got to get this bottom part to catch in the machine. And then once it does, it'll feed your paper all the way through for you. This color looks so good. I absolutely love this color. But, um... Yep, so you just let it do its thing, going all the way down, and then you can pull it out. And now it is laminated all the way around. Now, like I said, I am going to trim these sides, and I'll show you how to trim it um, and then run it through the second time. Um, so we're making a journal, which means we need front and back cover. So I'm going to do the other side. And you just open it up. And you stick your paper in there. Make sure you get it flush to the bottom, nice and straight. And then we're going to feed it through. Now, while that's going through, I'm going to grab my paper trimmer. Um, now, the camera probably isn't going to pick it up, but you can kind of see where, like, if I cut, if I were to cut right here, it'll start to split open. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that, but like you can see where if you cut it too close, it'll start to split open, which is about right there. So you want to cut kind of just outside of that part. And I'm going to, I'm not going to do the bottom. That's why I said you want to flush it to the bottom as much as you can, because as long as you flush it all the way to the bottom, the bottom doesn't have that much of a lip. So you don't need to trim the bottom. It's just kind of the size has a lot of overlappage, the top and then the other side. So I'm going to trim the two sides and the bottom. Okay, so now we have our sides 
and top trim. Now, I, I don't see any peeling, but I know for a fact if I don't reseal this, it will peel on the edges. So, all you do, you run it through a second time after you've trimmed it to get any edges that you just trimmed. You want to make sure they're nice and sealed. Running it through that second time is going to be the key if you decide to go the trimming route. Now, you can definitely decide to opt out of trimming and just rock with the extra lip or the extra, you know, material. But to me, the, um, the pages in the cover doesn't line up right when you have that much material left over. And now we're going to run that one through. And then we got nice sealed edges. That color looks amazing. Okay. I just like to kind of flick it just to make sure I don't see anything peeling. Especially, so this is for me. Um, I might give this one away. I don't know which I think. But um, if you're going to like sell these, you definitely want to make sure your edges are nice and sealed. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn this off. We are done with it. And then we're going to go on over here to the cinch. Oh, this is the other cover that I made. This one, I absolutely love this one as well. So I need to take this apart because... I didn't like how thin it was because there's there's not, like not enough paper in here. Um, so I need to take this apart and redo it. But the colors on this notebook. Okay. Look at the colors. Y'all, this is regular inkjet. Regular inkjet. I forgot to link the paper. So <clears throat> the most cost effective paper is going to be um, pre-purchased paper. Now, when I had started doing this back in 2020, um, all of the stores were closed and they were out of materials. So what I was doing was I was designing the cover pages and printing them off at home front and back. Um, yeah, I almost had like an anxiety attack doing that. So to be honest, I really wouldn't suggest doing that. Um, I mean, if you're like making a specialized book for somebody or something like that, okay. But other than that, yeah, I would not recommend at all. Um, so the best kind of paper is going to be the loose leaf paper that is not pre-punched, okay? I did not, I could not find any in my local store. You can get them off of Amazon, the loose leaf paper that doesn't have any holes. I'm just gonna have to rock with this for today just because I couldn't find any. But I forgot to link it in my description box, but I am after this video, um, check the description box. I am going to link the paper, the loose leaf paper that does not have these holes. That is going to be the best um, kind of paper to kind of do with these, the most cost efficient, okay? This was 130 pages, and I got this from my local Walgreens, and it was like $2.50 for all 130 pages, which in comparison to going to like, like let's say you were to do the cover pages, I mean, I'm sorry, the inside pages, you designed them yourself, 
and then you took it to like, let's say Office Depot to print it. I think it's more than that. I think I was paying like $15 a book and that was at a hundred and a hundred pages, like 100 pages front and back was like 50 cents a page or something like that. So this is going to be the most cost effective way to do it. Okay. But basically you got your front and your back cover. The front is obviously going to go on top and you're going to flip it over and you're going to place your back. This is going to ensure that you punch your holes on the back in the right spot because naturally, you know, I don't know if this like this for other people, but it is for me. The first time I ever made a book, I punch both the front and the back on the left side of the page. And obviously for the right, I mean, for the front cover, that's fine. For the back cover, it has to be punched like this because it's going on the back. So your back cover has to be punched on the right side, not the left side, because your back is going to be flipped over this way. If you punch it on the right side, this is going to be on the inside of the book. Like that. You don't want that. Okay. You want your back cover to show on the back, front and back. So to get it like that, you have to punch your holes, which would be on the right side of the cover. If you're looking at it like this, your holes have to go on this side. Looking at it like this, they go on the left side. Okay. So just make sure you're punching your back cover correctly. But this is how it's going to look. All right, so this is the cinch. Again, I have the old one. Um, I don't think it's this color anymore. I got mine four years ago. But it's. I think it's like $100. You guys, I paid the $100 four years ago. I still have it. It still works. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not, not electrical. You don't have to plug it in. Nothing. All the buttons, the levers, everything still works. So is it worth the hundred dollars? Absolutely. You guys, I did, I did at least 300 order books with this between books, journals, um, notebooks, all those things. I have punched a minimum of 300 books with this thing since I bought it four years ago because I was taking orders on it on the order books. Um, and then you need, sorry guys, I'm trying to find my coils. Um, coils. Okay. So the, um, the, the name of this brand is called We Are Memory Keepers. They also sell coils. We Are Memory Keepers coils. Um, they have different sizes. I got these ones from Hobby Lobby. They're four dollars and ninety nine cents, and two four came in a box. Four, yeah, four came in a box for four dollars and ninety nine cents, so a little over a dollar a piece. Um, but they do have different sizes. This one is the black one. They have white, they have gold, and I believe they also have silver, but I don't have any silver. Um, silver would have been really cute, but for this one, I think I'm going to go black. And this is what the coil looks like. You don't want to tangle this up, so be very careful with it when you take it out of the box. If you mess up, get these coils tangled. Baby, it's a wrap. You're going to need a new coil. Okay. Um, so to punch. This is what you use to kind of measure. Okay. So you, you, well, this is how I do it. I work from bottom to top when I'm punching. Okay. So I, I start with this being closed. And you're basically just going to line it up. So you're going to line the bottom with this bottom part here. 
and then you're going to make sure that this part is lined up underneath these holes but pushed all the way to the back as far as it can go push it all the way to the back push it all the way down to the bottom make sure that everything is flush so this is flush with the back part that's under here and then this bottom part is flushed with this part it's very important make sure everything is flushed and then you can just punch and then there's your bottom holes now to do the top holes you're gonna pull this out and we're doing eight and a half by 11 so we know that this is 11 long 11 there is a chart right here okay if you're punching something that's an a4 size it tells you what peg to pull okay if you're punching something that is 11 the top part white part is inches so if you're punching something that is 11 inches you're going to pull peg number 10 okay so that's how you know what peg number to pull based off of what size you're punching so this is going to be 11 inches which means we need to pull peg number 10 what does that mean we're gonna pull this all the way out and again we're gonna line this up with this you want to make sure everything is flushed so line this part up with this part again and we're gonna line the back up with the back this button here locks your paper in place we're going to pull peg number 10 right here this is number 10 you pull it out like that it just pulls right not all the way like the whole peg isn't going to come out but you pull that peg and it's going to stop the punch from being at the top all the way at the top so if i don't pull peg number 10 it's going to do like a half a weird punch right up here at the top and you don't want that. You want all circular punches like this, even punches. But if you don't pull that peg number 10, you're gonna get this weird half punch up here at the very top. That's why you're pulling it. Okay, with peg number 10 pulled, we're gonna go ahead and punch. And there's your top holes okay so that's the front cover um what do you mean by can you use a spiral binding I'm not sure how this paper is about to punch because it already has holes in it, but I'm, I'm just going to see. So to keep punching, I have to push my 10 peg back in. And again, this works best with hole with paper that doesn't already have holes in it. But let's see. Okay, so it's not that bad. Again, this is for me, so I'm not really pressed about it. But this is what it looks like with the, the three pre-punched holes. So I'm just gonna line up my coils with those ones. But that's why you should get the, uh, the paper that's not pre-punched. Sometimes paper can kind of get clogged. Like if you feel like it's not getting flushed, then that just means you might have some paper underneath there. You just want to get it out. Same thing. You want to pull peg 10, lock your paper in.
And then there's the holes. Uh, Miss T. Grayson, yep, I used to use chipboard. Chipboard was my favorite method at one point. I thought I had chipboard on me, but I don't. Maybe um, if you guys want, I'll do another live doing chipboard. That was my favorite method when I was selling order books. I would use chipboard. Um, they have, I would use the white chipboard and basically I would do glossy or matte sticker paper. Well, no, I did matte. I did matte sticker paper. And then I would, um, put the sticker paper on the chipboard. And then I would use the single sided lamination sheet, which is essentially lamination, but it's only one sided. And it's almost like a big sticker that you're putting on the front of it. And I would use the single sided lamination, um, lamination paper to laminate it. And I would use white so that the inside of it was white instead of that brown color. But the chipboard definitely, I would say, um, elevates it. It elevates the look a lot. It looks, um, to me, it looks cleaner, more professional. Okay. Is that good? I think that might be good. No. Let me just do all the paper. But yeah, if you guys want me to do another live where I do a chipboard cover, I can. I just gotta order some, cause I don't have any on here. I don't have the, uh, the lamination uh, paper either. I will have to order some of that too. like a spiral notebook I don't have those I just have the we are memory keepers ones I know um, like I have some sublimation journals those ones have like the kind of spiral notebook but I mean the spiral coil cannot believe sitting here doing this I made four no I made three it was like 300 order books with this um, cinch machine punched all the paper by hand that was a crazy time that was a crazy time What type of binding do you use or where did you purchase your chipboard? So the binding that I use is the We Are Memory Keepers coils in different sizes, depending on how big or small I was making the journal or notebook or order book or whatever it was. And then, um, 
the chipboard I believe I got from Amazon. <laughs> Um, yep, you can use any paper on the inside that you want. I've done this same thing making a sketch pad for my son where I just use copy plain, um, unlined copy paper on the inside so that he could draw on it. So I've made sketch pads for my son. Um, my son loves to draw. You can make coloring books if you want to print out. Um, oh, that would be a really good video. Um, you can print out uh, pages to color and you can make a coloring book um like the, really the the possibilities are endless like i when i was taking all those orders before it wasn't even for notebooks it was for order books so i would make like um the inside page was like if you were taking orders for t-shirts or tumblers or the person would tell me what they were going to be taking orders for or if you just kind of wanted an in general order, but it wasn't specific to t-shirts or whatever. So I would have like these template pages and I would just print them out and it would be front and back. And then I let them customize their front and back cover. But yeah, when it comes to making stuff like this, like you could, you could really get really creative on what kind of book you wanted to make. Um, I made some planners um, I remember one time I made an AKA planner for somebody who was in the sorority and she customized, I gave her five sections and she custom and she was in school, she was in college and I customized the five sections for what she needed. So like one section was a calendar and then one section was homework um, and the due dates that was needed, like for that page, or I mean, for that section. And then the next section was notes. And then the next section I think was, um, it was like sorority needs or to-do list or something like that. But I just customized all five sections. So I did planners as well. <clears throat> but you can really get creative when it comes to making your own kind of book however you want to do it where did you print the paper what is the least coffee way so i printed the paper um at office depot and i i will say so it truly truly depends on how many you're selling it depends on your volume on what's going to be the most cost efficient way so when I first was doing order books, the first wave, I, I made a video that kind of went viral and the first wave of order books, I got a hundred orders and then I had to turn off my orders. Um, the first hundred books I made at home and I printed on that Epson 7710 sitting over there that I just printed with. I did front and back cover and then I did 100 pages front and back on the inside so there was physically 100 pages but each page was also front and back um, and I printed those at my house and baby the amount of ink I went through was absolutely ridiculous okay zero out of five stars would not recommend if you are doing more than a handful, do not print them at home. Do not do that to yourself. Do not do it to yourself because the ink costs more than what it's worth, okay? So I would say if you're doing maybe like 10 books, go ahead and do it at home. After that, baby, go to Office Depot, okay? Just go to Office Depot. Um, but yeah, I did the first 100 at my house on the 7710 and I probably out of those 100 orders, I think I pocketed maybe $150 if that, which is crazy. That's not that, that number isn't big enough for the amount of orders that I did. And the fact that every single book had a customized front and back cover, $150 way too low. I played myself. 
Um, but you know, lessons were learned. So when I started back taking orders, um, all of the pages were not also the inside cover pages were also customized. Um, so like the inside cover page would be like an order book. It would be the order book. It would be the order page. And then like they could take their logo and kind of put it in the middle of the page, but I would dim the transparency. So it was kind of like their logo was faded into the page. And then the actual order sheet was on top of it. Um, so I did that too for the first 100 orders. And like I said, I only made $150 off that because in terms of pricing, I wasn't well educated. Um, but the second time when I cut my orders back on, hold on, this has to be on this side. When I cut my orders back on, I did not allow people to put their logos on the individual pages. Everybody got the exact same inside inside page. And I went to Office Depot and I just printed kind of standard pages. Um, there was no like faded out transparency on the back. It was black and white. It was not color. And I think it was maybe 20 cents a page front and back, something like that. Um, so, I mean, it, it truly depends on how many you're doing and what you're willing to do. But the most cost efficient is going to be going to Office Depot, standard black and white, um, and then maybe customize their cover. And that's it. What cards do I use? I got it from Michaels. I'll, I'll go grab it. <laughs> And show you guys when I'm done. It's just it's just some um white 180 cardstock that I got from Michaels in a pack, I believe. Uh which one am I pulling? 10? Yeah, 10. Miss T. Gray saying yes, the um the chipboard will not go through that laminating machine. So when I said the laminating, I meant like um it's kind of like a big piece of sticker paper. The what it looks like is you would have your cover and then almost like um like a piece of sticker paper. You put it on top like this and you would roll it down and kind of squeegee it onto the front. And it's, it would give it this glossy look on the front of the chipboard. But you're, you wouldn't run it through the laminating machine. The, chip, the chipboard won't fit. It's too thick. Uh, no, I don't have the adhesive cinch machine. Um, I am Reese. I don't. I don't do like orders for other people. Hey, Marissa, how are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, how much do you sell them for? If I were to do them now, to be honest, if I did like custom work the way that I was doing before, they would start at, I mean, at least $35, $40. I really wish I had, um, I don't even have any pictures in my phone. I don't think I can look through. I mean, you guys, I did so much custom 
work on those order books. Let me see if I can find a video. This was almost four years ago. I'm gonna have to go through my Facebook. I might have that AKA planner in here. I do the budget binders too. Okay, so here's a business binder that I did. Hopefully, I'm hoping y'all can see it. That's a cover. That's a custom cover that I did. This is the notebook. So she did t-shirts. Oh, this was a binder actually. She did decals. So I gave her an order form for the decals separate from the shirts. And then I put it in a binder and I bought the binder for her. Um, let me see. That's a custom cover. This was a prayer planner that I made custom. Like I said, each each order that I took was customized. Um, there's another one. This one was with the chipboard. I don't know if you guys saw the cover was hard. I made that one with the chipboard. That was an order book. These were all, look at all these covers. This is all chipboard covers. All different, all customized. Look at all the different logos. Crazy, that's crazy. I still can't believe this was a whole nother order. Different covers. Every cover was different. Every single cover was customized and these were on chipboard. Okay, y'all, I was putting in work. But, um, okay, so let's get to putting this together. So, yeah, but yeah, the question was how much would I charge? If I was doing something like that again, it would start at, uh, at at least, I would say $40 minimum. Because I I was doing a lot of customized work. A lot of customized work. And, it, and, and the books were thick, too. They weren't, like, thin or anything like that. You got a good amount of pages from me. I put a lot of time and effort into those books. And barely made no money off of them. Um, okay, so... On the cinch machine, I'm just putting it together, not even telling y'all. On the cinch machine, <coughs> it comes with the, these little kind of ridges here. And it's specifically made for the We Are Memory Keepers coil. So this is the We Are Memory Keeper cinch and the We Are Memory Keepers coil. And these coils right here literally just kind of hook right onto this, this part here, just like that. They go together, so this brand makes these things for you so that it just kind of all goes together. Then you take the back cover. I take the back cover and put the back cover down first. And then lay the inside pages on top.
But yeah, those are my humble beginnings. That was um I mean, I think I was doing YouTube, but I wasn't, I didn't have that many videos or that many subscribers or anything like that. I think I posted, um, I think I posted a picture in the Black Girls Craft Group. This was obviously before it got weird up in there. Um... But I think I had posted a picture or something in that group and the picture kind of went viral and then I got a whole bunch of orders. But this is it kind of put together. I haven't closed the coils yet, but I just put it on there. So this, um, the pack that I used was 130 pages. Um, the only thing, so the thing that I don't like about the loose leaf is it's kind of a little bit smaller than the covers. You see it a little bit? Now, I don't know if it was the pack that I bought. Oh yeah, this one was smaller, that's why. So these are eight by 10 and a half, whereas this was a eight and a half by 11. So when you're purchasing your paper, and like I said, when this video is over, I'll go back and I'll add a link. Get the eight and a half by 11 if you can, so that you don't get looking like, you know, that space. Um, but then you also, so to close these coils here, we're gonna use the back of the cinch. You literally can use the cinch to do everything. And when you're closing your coils, it's very important that you know what size your coils are because up here at the top, there is um, a measurement for your coils. If you go to punch your coils and you make your coils too tight, let me show you because I actually did it on this one. If you make your coils too tight, they overlap like this. And that looks ugly, and you don't want that. If you make it too loose, you have gaps. And then your paper comes through. You don't want that either. Okay? You want them to be nice and closed evenly. You don't want it to be closed too tight. And you don't want it to be closed too loose. So you have to make sure... that you know what size they are. And I'm pretty sure this is, is this inches? I think it's inches. Or maybe it's centimeters. No, I think it's inches. So, Let me see what this is in inches. 0 0.625 as a fraction. Okay, so this is 5 eighths, the size of my coils. So they have, they're like in fractions up here. So you have three eighths, a half, five eighths, three four, seven eighths, seven eighths, an inch. And then it goes a little bit above an inch there. My coil is five eighths. So you wanna line up this by turning this, you wanna line it up to where the five eighths is, which I just did here. So that should give me the perfect coil. Do you think it would be beneficial to use a printing company for orders over a hundred? Probably, it depends on the price. It depends on their price and it depends on um, how much you're charging per book. Um, same thing, you wanna make sure that this 
is flush up against this back part. And then you're just gonna press down. Okay, then the same thing. You wanna make sure it's flush and push it down. Now, I don't like that. It's a little too open for me. So I'm gonna go in between a half and five eighths and I'm going to do it again. And that looks better. So you want to just play with it. Like at first the coils looked to be too open to me. I didn't really like that. So I just adjusted it by a little bit. It was right on five eighths. So I wanted it to be closed just a tiny bit more. So I put it in between five eighths and, and um, a half. And now it looks perfect to me. Start off too big. Start off making your, your punch or your, um, your, coil press too big rather than too small these i actually these scissors i've had these scissors forever they're like wire cutting scissors i have specifically bought these scissors specifically for coils to cut them but i've been using them for everything else ever since then i know everybody always asks me where'd you get your scissors from i got them from amazon but i got them to cut the wires because i cut right through so you just cut the excess coil off. I always kind of take this piece here because once you cut it, <coughs> it's a little sharp. I just kind of take that and tuck it underneath because you don't want that sharp edge to catch on anything. So I just kind of tuck it like that. Hopefully you can see it tucked. And there's our book. There's our notebook. And like I said, get better paper. <laughs> get better paper on the inside than what I have. I just had to go grab something really quickly, but the book is for me. So, um, so yeah. I love making these and you guys there's a million different ways that you can make these covers um my favorite was definitely the chipboard definitely the chipboard we still have to press our shirt but does anybody have any questions on the cinch my um heat press is up to temperature so we're gonna go ahead and press our shirt too I'm here kind of late. I'm normally off by now, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to come on next week because my husband is going out of town for work on Sunday. So I'm going to see if my mom can come over and watch the kids so I can go live. But if not, I may still go live at home, but I just won't be crafting. And, and I may do like a chit chat type thing with you guys if I decide to go live within my organized chaos because I got four kids. So if I go live at home, you guys gonna see how I'm living, how those heathens bully me but i just want to press my um the uh template that i brushed in earlier this next part is the part where i mess up i just can't coil the coils without bending them it's never a perfect circle shape are you um are you using the cinch to do it? And are you, um,
using the right size. This Hyacinth AB is going to be so stinking pretty on this shirt. I know it is. That's my first layer, which is the Labrador. I have this cinch, but I haven't unboxed it. This has been very informative. So it doesn't matter if the front and back covers are put on last before closing the quotes. So about all the videos I've watched about using the cinch, and she said, It says put the papers inside first. That's one way to do it. If you put the papers in and then put the front and the back cover and then just kind of flip the back cover around. That's a way to do it too. I guess that it just depends on how you want your coil to lay. The, the, the difference would be how the coil lays. I'm missing a stone. Where the heck did my stone go? It's all right. I'll, oh, here it is. Look at that. A rogue stone. Y'all, these tweezers are like backwards. And I don't know who sent me those, but no ma'am. You're welcome, Stephanie. I'm glad I can Inspire you to get it out the box. The cinch is really fun. I mean, once you make one book, you're gonna you're gonna get addicted to making more. It's 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 really fun. This is the hyacinth AB on the inside. Press that one first. I have a cinch I need to close. Hey, Breezy. Girl, just keep practicing. My, my first book was a hot mess, too. I punched my hole on the wrong side of the back cover. So my back cover was inside out now i did that wrong didn't i or i brushed in this twice what in the, no i didn't okay there we go what about to say no, I did. That's not right. Did y'all let me brush in the same piece twice? No, I don't think that's right. This be the hard part of layering is figuring out which piece. Oop which piece goes where and now I'm 
making a mess. I just dropped my pillow piece. I'm pretty sure I pressed that in the wrong spot. But YOLO, we gonna make it work. was the neon green my piece is gonna be a little janky because I messed up that first one I messed up that first layer so but it's all right why because it's for me that's why I need a shirt that says it's for me. F A. It's for me. Yeah, these pieces don't fit. <laughs> But that's okay. Thank you, Donzo. That's okay. <laughs> These colors look so good. Oh, look at that hyacinth AB. Do y'all see them colors? Y'all see how my puzzle pieces don't really line up perfectly? Because my red piece wasn't, I don't know, my red piece was off. So it made all the other pieces off. But Look at the colors. These are neon shining like that, except for the red. The red is candy apple. And the hyacinth AB is doing what it needs to do. For sure doing what it needs to do. All right. We did a lot. We did a lot. Let me go to the laptop. I'm going to answer any questions I may have missed. And then we're going to get out of here. Right. So what do y'all think about the cinch? Did I answer questions? I love these colors. I love these colors. I love these colors so much. But this was the book that we did. So if you're just popping in, um, I did show how to design this in Canva. I printed it from Silhouette Studio um, from <coughs> my inkjet printer. Sorry, guys, I still got a little cough lingering. Um, 
And then, but yeah, this is regular inkjet. Printed it with my Epson 7710, which is regular inkjet. And then we used the We Are Memory Keeper Cinch to bind it. Um, I'm going to go back when I get off the live. I'm going to link the right paper that you should use for this kind of notebook. Um, I will also link the chipboard. I know that some of you guys were asking about the chipboard covers. Um, I will go ahead and order the materials and then I'll show you guys how to do chipboard covers as well. Those are actually my favorite. But thank you guys. I'm scrolling through the comments here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is the heart on the top? You're wearing 3D. Um, it's the puff. So this is, I use puff vinyl for this. Um, I actually made this sweatshirt on live some months ago. So if you kind of go back through my lives, um, I want to say in 2023, some months ago, I made this shirt on live and that is puff vinyl. But I'll probably do it again because this is Autism Awareness Month. Um, my husband was saying he wanted a sweatshirt, so I'll probably be making him one too. Got me wanting to make journals. I'll make the journals. I want to see them. I want to see y'all's journals. I want to see y'all's journals. Can you remove the coils and add more paper if needed? Yep. Now, I will say if you remove the coil, nine times out of ten, your coil will not be able to be reused. Um it truly depends on how you remove it. If you're gentle with it, if you remove it like prong by prong, um, then you'll be able to reuse it. Um, to be honest, they might get a little bent weirdly, but yes, you can remove the coils. I have done it before. Um, I remember I made a order book and I messed up one of the girl's covers and I just took the coil off to get the inside pages. And then I replaced her um, cover, her front and back covers, but I kept the inside pages. But when I removed the coil, the coil, when I went to try to recoil it the second time, it bent weird. So instead of having that nice rounded shape on the coils, it was kind of like bent and it just looked raggedy. So, and because she paid for it, you know, I didn't want to give that to a customer. Um, so you may have that problem if you try to reuse the coil, but you can take it off for sure. You just may not be able to reuse it. That's all. Paulette, I want to see, I want to see your journal. The coloring books definitely sound... Like that, that would be fun. I made my son a sketch pad for Christmas, not this last Christmas, but last year. I made him a sketch pad for Christmas. Y'all, he used up that sketch pad, the whole book. He used it up in like two weeks. My son loves to draw. Actually, for Easter yesterday, I, I made him, I made the my kids Easter baskets and um I put another sketch pad and gel pens in his Easter basket and his sketch pad is already like a quarter of the way used up. He be on it. So I might do coloring books. Maybe I'll go live again and do a coloring book or maybe a sketch pad. You bought yours in 2020. So yours probably looks, has the same, the gray and blue color as mine or gray and teal. What brand puff vinyl do you use? I use, um, I use um, the one from Atlanta Vinyl, the 3D Parrot Puff, I think it's called from Atlanta Vinyl, is what's on my shirt. I've started to use the Caesar brand, but I haven't used all the colors. Um, so I can't vouch for all of the colors in Caesar, but I do know 
I've used pretty much all of the colors from Atlanta Vinyl, and I like theirs. So Atlanta Vinyl 3D Parrot Puff. My question is not related to your designs, but I'm curious about the cabinets your equipment is on. Uh, this one right here. These are kitchen cabinets from mm, Home Depot, I believe. This one, I actually don't like this one because I thought that this was a drawer, but it's a fake drawer. The drawer doesn't actually open. Um, and I never went and got knobs, but they're just kitchen kitchen cabinets these are kitchen cabinets and then i get the tabletop from ikea it's a linman tabletop and then the kitchen cabinets are white shaker i believe i don't know the name of the brand maybe hampton bay I don't remember which brand I got. It might have been Hampton Bay, though, from Home Depot. But they're white shaker kitchen cabinets. And the top is a Linman tabletop from Ikea. Yeah, the chipboard is fun. That's my favorite um, method to use is the chipboard. I haven't done it in years years. I haven't done chipboard in years. Were the colors neon regular or neon AB on the shirt? I use all regular neon. No, I did not do the vending machines for my kids. Child. I still don't have the hinges. I don't know what happened to the hinges. In Like I ordered them from Amazon and they still haven't come. They actually sent me a notification and told me your hinges might be lost. So I never got the hinges, but I actually wasn't even, I didn't even care because last week we went to Chicago Monday through Thursday. We didn't come home until Thursday night. So then I only had Friday and Saturday and I don't come to the office on Saturdays because I, you know, be busy doing family stuff. And then I had to get my house in order and stuff for Easter. So I just did not have time to do the other vending machines. So I just made them regular baskets. I literally went to Walmart and I think Walmart and Meyer and... Michael's. I got like the cellophane. Is that what they're called? Cellophane bags. And I just grabbed them a bunch of stuff and just made their baskets like super quick. I have a general planner created, but I'm having a hard time getting them printed reasonably. The issue, I mean, that was an issue that I was having when I did them, was finding reasonable pricing on the printing. Um, that's why, I've, I mean, and, and people don't want to, they, they can't justify paying $40 for a journal when they can go to Target and buy one for $15. So I get it because that was the problem that I was running into. But at the same time, because of how much it costs to print the pages, it's almost like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not a big corporation. I'm not Target. Either you have to pay for this customized handmade journal or I can't do it. That was the issue I was running into as well. Um, but like I said, the cheapest way to do it that I found, and I, I didn't try every single method. Granted, I did not try every method. I did print from home on my own, and I did print at Office Depot, where the two, I mean, Office Max, were the two methods that I use. And printing at Office Depot, where everybody's inside pages were exactly the same, black and white, and I think I just ordered, I had, so I had Office Depot separate them by the hundreds. So each notebook would get a hundred pages front and back. So it's technically what, 200, I think. Um, 
but each there was 100 physical pages in the book, but then they were also front and back. They were plain black and white. And that's how the inside pages were after that first initial 100 orders that I did. And then the front and back covers I printed at home and they were customized. But I want to say printing front and back black and white was maybe 20 to 25 cents a page. And then I would just have, I would go up there and I would print like, I would be printing those by the thousands. I mean, like I have boxes of paper from Office Depot, heavy boxes, like with thousands of pages in there. And I would, they would separate them for me by the hundreds. So it would be like a hundred pages would print and then they would take them off the printer and put like a manila envelope or, or a manila piece of paper to separate by the hundred. So it would be 100 and then a separator, 100 and then a separator so that I didn't have to count the pages myself. And that was also really, really quick. So I would make the cover pages front and back, get them all printed, get them on the chipboard, get them all laminated. And then I would just get to pressing them with the, the cinch punching out the holes. It was a lot. It was a lot. And after, I think I did, like I said, I think I did at least 300. So the first hundred I had to cut off and then I had to figure out a way to get more money. The second one, the second time I got another hundred orders, had to cut it off. That was when I started going to Office Depot. And then the third time, I think I got something like 84 orders or something. It was a little less than 100. And then I cut it off again and I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. It's just too much for it to be customized. And then people don't want to, like my price went up after that first 100 pages. So like some of the people that were in the second wave of orders, new people from the first wave of orders. And I guess they talked amongst themselves and realized that the price had gone up and they were like questioning me about it. Well, my such and such cousin, pay, you know, order one from you three weeks ago and she paid this. And I'm like, well, this ain't three weeks ago and you're not your cousin. I don't know what to tell you. The price went up. So, I mean, you know, that's why I don't take orders. Because I respond just like that. My husband said that's rude, but. I don't know. In regards to printing out those pages, I did not find a reasonable way to print them. I just quit. <laughs> uh, I just quit. If you find something, though, come back and let the rest of us know. I got the hinges and just put them up after the machine didn't come out right. Yeah. When I, if and when I do get those hinges, they're just going to go in a box of stuff that I have somewhere. Do you make smaller size journals? I haven't. I never tried the, like the A4 size. I've never tried them before. I only ever did the um, the bigger ones, the eight and a half by eleven. But I have seen a lot of people do the A4 sizes. Um, I just never did it myself. <coughs> no, it's not. They don't question Macy's about their prices. That's what I said. That, don't nobody walk into Macy's and be like, well, my cousin paid $10 for this shirt two weeks ago. She probably caught it on a sale and had a coupon. This ain't two weeks ago and you not your cousin. I don't know what to tell you. But anywho, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, y'all. I still have to drive home. Um... But I have fun. Next week, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to come on here or not, number one. Um, if I do, I'm not sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. My husband's going to be out of town. 
Um, and my mom currently lives an hour away. She's getting, um, she technically lives right around the corner from my office, but um, they're getting construction done on their house and they can't live in the house while it's being done. So she moved an hour away and she's staying with my aunt right now. So I don't know if she'll be willing to come down here to babysit late in the evening. Um, so I may just come on here and maybe do like a business chat or something from my house, but we'll see. I'm not sure. If I don't come on at all next week, then I will see you guys the week after that. Um, or maybe I'll go live like Tuesday afternoon. Maybe I'll do that. Um, but I don't know. I guess I'll see y'all when I see y'all. But you guys have a good night. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate you guys. And I will see you next time. Have a good night.